All right. <clears throat> Good morning. We are going to get this started here in a second. As soon as some things. There we go. I'm just going to invite some folks to this and talk to you a little bit about this Game of Thrones. I'm going to do this. This is kind of going to be like an OPBC online live. I've never done that before, but I figured I'd try it since, hey, why not? Can't hurt, right? So I want to talk to you about Game of Thrones uh, and then kind of a little bit deeper than that. And I think, you know, I want to talk about this article that is popular on Sermon Audio right now. It's on their main website. And, you know, I, I honestly believe that we are missing the point here uh, with this. But I'll, I'll get into that in a second here, just to let you know. But um, I think it's very important that we understand what this is and how far... Christians have come in in their compromise with Hollywood. It is a love affair with Hollywood. It definitely is. And it's costed a lot. And I think the hypocrisy that we live out in our lives when we don't separate from this evil, it shows. And it has a damaging effect on our children, on our witness to the world, on everything. Um, and, you know, sadly... Sadly, it's become the norm. So I guess what I want to do is I just want to share some things with you here about this and kind of explain to you what this Game of Thrones is. Um, so I'm going to go to the Wikipedia page first and just give you kind of a breakdown of this. Um, and then I'm going to tell you why, because you might be like, well, why in the world are we even talking about Game of Thrones? Okay, what's the big deal about it? Why does it even matter? Well, it does matter when you understand that there are a ton of professing Christians that are admitting that they're watching this. And it's sad. So let me just read you just an introduction here. Game of Thrones is an American fantasy drama television series created by David Benoff and is an adaption of A Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, the series it's a series of fantasy novels okay it's set on the fictional continents of Westeros and Essos Game of Thrones has several plot lines and a large ensemble cast but centers on three primary story arcs now think about this one thing I want to share this with you this is on HBO now there is no Christian that should ever have HBO there is no way that you can justify as a Christian watching HBO. I mean, listen, when I when I was a kid and living in sin, HBO was the most wicked thing in the world that I could have access to. It was literally pornography that as a child you could have access to. That's right, Brother Alexander, Hellbox Office. And um <clears throat> Game of Thrones has attracted record viewings on HBO, has a broad active international fan base, has been acclaimed by critics. But it's, listen to this, particularly for its acting, complex characters, story scope, and production values, although its frequent use of nudity and violence, including sexual violence, has been criticized. Duh! Duh! But you know, that's that's crazy, right? You're like, well, that's bad for lost people to be watching that. Well, guess what? I'm not talking about lost people. I'm talking about, and I don't know whether these people are lost or not, okay? But I'm, I'm talking about professing Christians, okay? So I want to, so there's a pastor, and he's not a Baptist pastor. You know, he's, he's a Christian pastor, whatever. That's not the point, okay? The point is what he's saying. He says, I don't understand in his article. He says, I don't understand christians watching game of thrones he said that's what he said two weeks ago and read this article and i'll link i'll put the link to the article in the description okay so you can find it this show is full of sexual violence and nudity and christians professing christians are defending this show and saying they see some kind of validity or quality to it Number one, so he gives 10 reasons why, 10 excuses he's heard, okay? 
10 excuses that he's heard, okay? <clears throat> Number one, people say, well, you haven't seen the show. He says, true, but no one has tried to refute that Game of Thrones is full of graphic sexual scenes. Don't worry, I'm not going to get graphic with any of this. I'm just, this is just very PG rate, G rated probably compared to what the world is. I'm not going to get into anything specific. I'm not going to be vulgar or anything like that. Number two, they say, don't like it, then don't watch it. That's not the point. Pastors and, and Christians are supposed to warn people against things like this. We're supposed to say, you know what? We don't need to have anything to do with this garbage. If it has us in there, you need to say, look, friend, you don't need to be watching this garbage. He goes on, that pastor goes on to say, that would be a fine point if the argument only concerned taste and preference. But what would you say if your son tried that line of defense with pornography? What if your son said, well, if you don't like it, Dad, just don't watch it. That is pornography, by the way. Here's where I go a step further than these reformed guys and these other guys. Listen, friend, there's no difference in pornography and Game of Thrones. That is pornography. God already stated what nudity was. God already stated what nudity was. Yeah, that's right, Brother Peterman. I'm not going to describe it. I don't know what happens. I've never seen it, and I don't want to see it. I'm not going to describe it. But pornography, that, that's exactly, that, that's the same thing as pornography. There's no difference. How God's people can ever try to differentiate that and say, well, it's just a little bit of nudity. It's just a little bit of sexual violence. It's just a little bit of this. That's right, Brother Peterman. It is a shame to speak of those things. We won't get into any details of any of those things. Then, then one person makes the excuse, the Bible is full of sex and violence. This is a popular retort, though hardly persuasive. No one is arguing that reading about sin, or even in every case that uh, he says it, it, is, it is necessarily sinful. We read the Bible, yes, we read about graphic accounts, not too graphic, of rape and other things that take place. But it's not, it's not to intrigue you. Do you understand the difference? This Game of Thrones is to intrigue you with rape and violence and everything else. That's not biblical. God says in the Bible, no, God punished that rape. God punished that violence. God dealt with that sin. God did not romanticize it. There's nothing in the Bible that romanticizes evil. You won't find that anywhere in the scriptures. That's the difference. There's no romanticizing evil in the word of God. God plainly states it's wicked and vile in his sight. God does not romanticize evil at all. Never does God put a good spin on evil. Never. He always shows you right and wrong and the judgment of God. Always, 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 always does that. That's the difference, friend. Some One person says, well, um, those scenes of fornication and nudity don't faze me. That's a lie. All evil and sin phases you. For you to say that is insane. And it's not honest at all. The Bible says mine eye affecteth my heart. That's what it says. The Bible says that I will set no unclean thing before mine eyes. I'm not to look at any unclean thing before mine eyes. I'm not to do that. I'm not. I'm not to set those things before mine eyes. That's what the Bible says. Job said he made a covenant with his eyes that he would not look upon a maid to lust after her. Right? That's what Job said. These people are saying, well, that's... Well, you know what? We'll get to that in a second about your conscience, but... My conscience isn't bothered, they say. Well, what does Hebrews 10.22 say? Let's turn there. Hebrews 10.22. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So the Bible says about your conscience. 
First Timothy 4, 2. It says, speaking lies and hypocrisy in the end times, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. If you say nudity doesn't bother you and those wicked things don't bother you, then you may have a conscience seared with a hot iron then. You may have a cauterized conscience. Job made a covenant with his eyes, again, like we said, Job 31.1. And Christians are commanded to dress modestly. So God commands you to dress modestly. Don't you realize that he doesn't want you watching things that are immodest? The next response and rebuttal they said was, stop judging and shaming us. God says to judge righteous judgment. God says we're supposed to judge sin and evil and wickedness. God says we're to judge ourselves before we are judged by others. That's right, Vanessa. That is a scary uh, place to be. If you, if you, uh, if your conscience has no feeling towards that, that's a scary place to be, friend. Number seven, they say, I close my eyes during the bad parts. Listen, if you close your eyes during bad parts, it means you have to peek to figure out where the good parts are. So you're still being defiled. Also, you're putting mental images inside of your mind. And those are already indelibly there. You can't get rid of those, okay? I preach a sermon. Go back and listen to a sermon called Burning an Image Never to Be Erased. Go back and listen to the My Pornography series. I don't get lewd or anything like that. I just tell how pornography rewires your brain. It absolutely rewires your brain. And you know what? Some more preachers need to stand up and preach against that dirty, wicked garbage of pornography and everything else. And stand up against that nonsense. You think it's not in your congregations. You think it's not in your churches. And you're full of beans, friend. You better preach against that nonsense. And you better preach that devil out of those people with that stuff. You better preach the hell right out of them with that stuff. And get it out of their lives. Preach it right out of them, man. You got to call people to repentance. You wouldn't need programs like Reformers Anonymous and everything else if preachers stood up and preached the word of God. I got saved by the grace of God, okay? I got saved from a life of hell. I know what it's like. And I don't want to go back into that mess. I know what that mess does to you. I've got a mind that saw those things for years and years and years. And you deal with the effects with it for the rest of your life. That's why we try to keep our children away from that nonsense. And then you've got professing Christians defending it. How confused are you? Number eight, they said most shows have good and bad elements. The story and art, art history, artistry outweigh it. And the bad scenes. That's like saying I could pick up... A, this, this preacher says the same thing I would. That's like saying, well, I only read Playboy for the articles. They have very good articles in Playboy. By the way, I mean, I was a lost man and I looked at Playboy, so I understand. Yeah, they have some articles in there. But they do that on purpose to give themselves some validity, to give evil some validity. Do you understand that? And nobody looks at Playboy for the articles. I just want to help you with that. Nobody. You can lie to yourself all you want to. I don't need to go through the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue and say, well, I'm looking at the, the nice beaches that are there, the, 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 the nice, uh, come on, friend. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to yourself. And that's right, Jeremy, Jeremiah. Porn does set up a false image in your mind of what love is. Oh, my. And listen, I've pastored people for 10 years now. And I'm going to tell you what. When they deal with the effects of that pornography and they try to have a real relationship with a wife, a loving relationship, even though they're saved by the grace of God, they got a lot of work ahead of them to deal with. It takes a lot to get that stuff out of them, even though they're saved. I'm not saying they look at it ever again. What I'm saying is, is the image of what they had was love is completely wrong and it's got to be fixed. It's got to be fixed. And only the Holy Ghost can renew their mind and teach them what real biblical love is. And that peep show garbage, nonsense, wicked, fake, plastic love that they saw from Satan is not real. It isn't real. And they have to learn to love. Really love. Look, I ain't trying to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. 
I've dealt with it, man. I've dealt with it. In this generation of 20 to 30 year olds, I'm telling you, they are consumed with that. Pastors, you have in your churches people that you think they ain't looking at pornography or they haven't, or they're not feeling the effects of it, but they have, and so are their relationships. So are their relationships. I'm not being unkind. I'm trying to help you. I really am. I want to show... Then the next one they say is, but I, I, I watch the show to engage my coworkers with the gospel. How many people you think are getting saved because you watch Game of Thrones? Come on now. Come on. Now that's about dumb right there. I don't even that don't even deserve even to comment any further on. That's just stupid. Okay. Then somebody says, "Don't we have more important things to worry about?" Well, I think pornography and Christians Christians supporting HBO. I think Christian supporting HBO is a lot to worry about, friend. I think it's an extreme amount to worry about. Tyler, you get a hold of me and I'll send your brother an entire series on pornography that I preached. You get a hold of me, I'll send it by CD free. I don't charge anything. We send them out free. I'll send them to him. Go ahead. You get a hold of me. Okay. Now, having said all that and going through what he said, here's what I want to say to you. Christians, this goes beyond Game of Thrones. This goes to the heart of the matter. Christians' love affair with Hollywood. we got to break those strongholds and those chains that bind us here with this. And it's time to disconnect from Hollywood. It's been time a long time ago. But there is nothing redeemable there is nothing good about Hollywood. You cannot sit and tell me where you can defend Hollywood. The whole history of Hollywood. I've got a, I've got a DVD I'll send you for free. It's called Hollywood Satanic Roots Reloaded. It's part one and two of that series. It's on there. I can send you the whole Hollywood series free. I don't mind. I'll send it to you. If you want it, you got it. I'll send it to you on CD. Or DVD. That's a DVD. That is a... I think it's a, a, an hour and a half video. Also got Disney reloaded. Uh, D Disney, the Magic Kingdom of the Kingdom of God reloaded. Uh, you can go listen to that. We did a video, or you can watch that. We did a video on that. Why am I saying that? I'm not charging anything for this. This stuff's all free. I'm not making any money on any of this stuff. I want you to have it. I want you to listen to it. I want you to watch it. I want you to learn why Hollywood is sweet. I don't put anything terrible in there and that, that. I just explained to you the history of Hollywood. The history of these things, how they were never good. It, it was never good. It was never right. God never approved of it. And we, listen, friend, the problem is the plots, the scenarios, the rebellion that's taught. Hollywood teaches rebellion. It teaches disorder, Satan, satanic principles, do without will, shall be the whole of the law. Disney teaches all that wickedness. Friend, none of these things are biblical. None of these things are right. We should not be watching and supporting these people. These actors hate God. They hate everything about God. Their whole industry is set up and it's anti-Christ. And us supporting them. Now you've got all these Baptists and these Christians that are actually going to the movie theaters now. And they're watching all this. Well then, you have other Baptists that just watch it at home on their DVD. And nobody knows. Or their Blu-ray. Or their Amazon. Or their Netflix. And now you can hide Hollywood in your house and nobody knows what you're watching. I remember I used to be one of those Christians. I'm not better than anybody. I'm not saying that. But I used to be one of those Christians. You know what I used to do? I used to say, well, we won't talk about what we watch at home because, you know, that's like personal to family and everything else like that. And, you know, everybody has different standards. And that's all true and all to a certain extent. But the truth of the matter is, brother and sister... We're ashamed of what we watch. And we don't want anybody to know that we're watching that garbage because we're afraid they're going to think differently of us. You, we're afraid that they're going to they're going to know they're going to know that we're watching things that are sinful. Nudity, 
plots that teach rebellion, plots that have children and your and and or and have people rebelling against their parents, dressing in a different way that we would not, that we tell our children don't dress this way and you dress this way like a Christian, but then we are putting entertainment in front of their faces that dresses in a wicked fashion. And we're saying, hey, that's okay. But we're teaching them opposite by what we're allowing them to entertain themselves with. And I know this isn't popular. And I don't pretend people are going to like what I'm saying. But I'm telling you it's real. And it teaches our children rebellion. It teaches them against God. It teaches them to mock God. It teaches them to rebel against God. Disney, Pixar, Toy Story, all that stuff. It all has plots. It's not just naked people on the screen. It's not just people that are dressed wrong. It's love affairs to people that aren't even married. It's teaching them that that stuff's okay. You can't filter out Hollywood. You can't make it better. Do you understand? There's no way to filter out the plots that they teach, the lessons they teach, the things that they teach our children, the things that they teach us and influence us with. All of their scripts and their storylines and everything. It's wicked. It's teaching us to accept the world and its standards. And the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Right? What does that say in 1 John chapter 2, right? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And I'm telling you what, too many pastors are thinking this stuff's too taboo, and they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to warn people about it. They think their church isn't, doesn't have any of this stuff in there. And I'm going to tell you what, friend, it does. And you better warn your people about it. And you better preach again. Well, I'll just keep them busy doing the work of God, and they won't get into anything. Friend, you're fooling yourself. That didn't happen in the Bible. They warn their people. My little children, keep yourselves from idols. They warn them about the eye and the heart. They warn them about the things that they saw. They warn them about the groves. They, God in his law gave commandments and he warned the people about things. He warned them about being a, the, their gods being a snare to them and a trap to them. And he warned them to flee from that. And this Game of Thrones is a bunch of sexual violence and nonsense and wickedness. And not to mention HBO, how absolutely satanic and wicked and sexually perverted it is. You think, well, not my family, not my kids. They won't be affected by it. Not my church, not my people. Friend, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you're pastor in a church and you haven't preached against Hollywood and you haven't preached against the movie industry and you haven't been specific about those things, there's people in your church that are watching things that are wicked as hell. I know. Because we did here. We had people here that were. And when we preached about Hollywood and we repented of it, we brought them all in and burned them and shot them up with guns, all the bad movies and everything and everything else. And we got rid of them. We had revival in this church and God used this church. I'm not exalting me. It was God that did it, man. I was in, I was in sin. I wasn't watching a lot of wicked things or anything myself, but I still had some of that stuff in my house. And it was wicked to God. The stuff that I was watching, I wasn't watching nudity and all those things. It was bad enough. I was watching the plots and the bad things. Friend, I'm just trying, I'm trying to warn you. I'm trying to tell you that God doesn't want you to be involved with Hollywood. It's not just Game of Thrones, but this is how far Christians have come. Did you ever think 20 years ago, Christians, professing Christians in America would be defending nudity and sexual violence for a plot line and a story that they like? No, we never thought that. We never thought that in a million years. But this is where we are. It's time to repent. You know what? It's time to get right with God and bust up some movies. And repent of Hollywood. Repent of watching that nonsense. Repent of all the, the, the Netflix and all that stuff. And put it away from among you. You don't need it.
What do you need it for? What good does it do? What good does it do to you, for you? Fills your head with a bunch of nonsense and distracts you from the things of God. Defiles your mind and your heart. You got to wade through things to try to get something acceptable for your children. And feel that, you feel that preacher? You feel that gut feeling inside that feels sick inside? You feel that Christian when you compromise? You feel that in your gut when you let your kids watch something that is compromising? You've tried to get around it somehow and, and you just had to compromise to let them do it. You feel that gut shot? from the Holy Ghost. Oh, that don't feel good. Oh, you feel that defiled conscience when you know you've done wrong, when you've had a partial obedience and you know you've done wrong and you feel, oh, I don't like the way that feels. I feel like a compromiser. Right? I'm telling you, it's time to repent and get some things right with God, friend. It's time to put away these things for a moment. Stop making excuses. Stop justifying sin. Stop justifying evil. Stop justifying Hollywood. Stop justifying. Hey, listen, if you need Hollywood Satanic Roots on DVD, just send me an email, send me a text, whatever it is. Pastor Cooley at iCloud.com. You can contact me there. It's fine. I'll send it out to you. I'll send the DVD out to you on either one of them. You can get educated on it. You can download them from sermonaudio.com. Not all of them are on YouTube. The video, the two videos are on YouTube. I want to give them to you free. I'm not making money. It's all free. I don't, I, I don't want anything for it. I want to help you. We live by faith. God takes care of us. We'll pay for postage too. I, I, I'm not trying to make any money off you, okay? I want you to have this. I want you to watch it. I want you to understand the truth about these things. Now listen, if you caught on to this video and you're not saved, and you just happen to click on it, and you've been, you, you, obviously you're watching Hollywood, you're watching, you've got a greater problem than Hollywood, friend. You're lost. You're dead in trespasses and sins. You're walking according to the course of this world. And you need to be saved. You need your sins forgiven. Jesus said, marvel not that you must be born again. You need to be saved by the grace of God. You need your sins forgiven you. Jesus said he came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. You need to repent, turn from your sin, and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone. He'll give you power over sin after you're saved. You can't. You can't stop sinning. You don't have the power to do that. You need to be saved. You need Jesus to forgive your sins. You need to turn from your unrighteousness. You need to trust Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. He was buried and he rose again from the dead. And the Bible says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You can be saved today. Your sins can be forgiven you today. And you can have a home in heaven. But you must be born again. You must be born again. You must have your sins forgiven. Oh, my friend, this could be the greatest day of your life if you're lost today. You know what? You could have watched pornography and every wicked thing in this world, but Jesus Christ can forgive your sins. He is able. The Bible says, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Ah, Jesus can save you from your sins today. And he can give you a home in heaven. Turn to Christ today. Trust him as your savior. He'll save your soul and give you a home in heaven as a result. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So you turn to Christ today and he'll save your soul. All right. Have a good day, everybody.